catch me hollering at the moon. What's up guys and welcome back to Park Pros. It's been over a year since I've done a normal coaster review on the channel, but there's been a trend in the coaster community that I've noticed over that time that has finally compelled me to make this video. And no, it's not the disturbing amount of coaster enthusiasts that are getting exposed as pedophiles. It's this idea that Steel Vengeance, the RMC hyper hybrid coaster at Cedar Point, is an overrated roller coaster. This is a sentiment that I've seen growing all over social media, particularly in the last year. But it really reached the pinnacle for me when CoasterBot revealed the results of his Vote Coasters poll. Harry polled over 3,500 people on their favorite roller coasters, and for the second straight year, the poll ranked Steel Vengeance as the world's top roller coaster, which to me at least, didn't seem like a very surprising or controversial outcome. Yet in the comments section, almost every single person was in one way or another calling Steel Vengeance overrated. And whether it's the sadistic trolls on Instagram, the dude wearing a tie-dyed coaster shirt in line at a theme park, or one of the many hilarious top 25 coaster ranking videos on YouTube. It does seem like a decent part of the theme park community has fallen out of love with Steel Vengeance since it opened in 2018. Now, people hating on popular things is no new concept. And as the most popular roller coaster at one of the most famous amusement parks in the world, it'd be ridiculous to say that Steel Vengeance should be free of criticism. But in my opinion, the hate for this ride has gotten so out of hand that it doesn't really even feel authentic anymore. So I'm here today to remind you of Steel Vengeance's greatness as a roller coaster and to defend its name from the ongoing slander. But first, if you guys are new here or enjoy the videos, be sure to subscribe and drop a like as it really does help out the channel a ton. In 1991, Cedar Point debuted Mean Streak, which opened as the tallest and fastest wooden coaster in the world at 161 feet tall and 65 miles per hour. The early 1990s was the beginning stages of what's now known as the Coaster Wars, where most parks were more concerned about breaking roller coaster records rather than making sure the coasters they were building were actually good. So Mean Streak was just like most of the other wooden coasters that opened in the 90s. Really tall, really fast, and really boring. And as it aged, you could add unbearably rough to that description as well. As soon as the rest of the theme park industry started to recognize the success that Six Flags had partnering with Rocky Mountain Construction, which had turned two of the chain's awful 90s wooden coasters into pretty good rides, Mean Streak immediately shot right to the top of the list of coasters that enthusiasts wanted to see RMC'd, since it not only was one of the largest wooden coasters in the world, but also just happened to be at the park most well known for attempting to break just about every roller coaster record ever existing. In August of 2016, Cedar Point announced that Mean Streak would close permanently, and a year later they officially unveiled what was probably the worst kept secret in the history of the industry, that Mean Streak would be RMC'd and would open as Steel Vengeance for the 2018 season the world's first ever hyper hybrid coaster. Steel Vengeance debuted in May of 2018 as the world's tallest, fastest, and longest hybrid coaster, and the general consensus from the weeks following its opening was basically that this was the greatest roller coaster ever built. Fast forward to today, four operating seasons since Steel Vengeance opened, and the ride has gone from being universally loved to a bunch of loudmouth coaster enthusiasts seemingly determined to give this ride a reputation as overrated. So let me take the next few minutes to remind mind you, what, in my mind, makes Steel Vengeance the greatest roller coaster in the United States, if not the world. It's sundown at Cedar Point, and the wildest ride that's ever come to town is facing you down. Steel Vengeance. When discussing Steel Vengeance's greatness as a roller coaster, I think the first thing you have to appreciate is the ride's length. Mean Streak was over 5,400 feet long, which gave Cedar Point and RMC a massive footprint to work with. And I think they squeezed just about as much roller coaster out of that structure that they possibly could. Vengeance is the ninth longest roller coaster in the world, and the longest built by RMC by a margin of about 700 feet. And weirdly enough, it's actually double the length of two other RMC hybrid coasters, Twisted Cyclone and Storm Chaser. And that's kind of the lens I look at Steel Vengeance with. It's basically two roller coasters for the price of one. The first half of the ride is mostly elements that give it more of a traditional hyper coaster feel. 
You start with that insane 90 degree first drop, which is easily one of the best in the world. Then you go into those two massive off-axis camelback hills. And these remind me a lot of the kind of elements that Intamin has been incorporating into their new coasters lately. These hills deliver both great airtime and do what RMC does best, which is confusing the hell out of your body with some phenomenons that are completely unconventional for a traditional sit-down roller coaster. The first half also has a couple great speed hills that really make you feel every bit of that 74 miles per hour, and are similar to the ones you see on the BNM Giga coasters. Then you have those two inversions up 100 feet in the air, which you usually take at a pretty insane pace, making them both really intense. After a couple bonus airtime moments, you hit the mid course and go into the second half of the ride, which has a layout that's a little bit more consistent with your typical RMC hybrid coaster. You have outer and overbank curves, off axis airtime, two more zero G rolls, and bunny hills just about everywhere in between. Not to mention the countless head choppers you'll experience as you fly through the ride's massive support system. The main reason I consider Steel Vengeance to be the best roller coaster ever built is because its layout is so dynamic and feels like it incorporates not only the best elements from RMC, but also takes influence from other manufacturers' best rides as well. The first half feels like a love child between a BM Hyper and an Intamin Mega Coaster, with some insane inversions thrown in there just for good measure. And then the second half feels like your traditional 100 foot tall RMC hybrid coaster, incorporating shades of rides like Wicked Cyclone and Twisted Timbers. Steel Vengeance throws the kitchen sink of different elements and forces at you with relentless pacing. And even though the ride is an insane 90 seconds long from the top of the lift hill to the final brakes, the mid course brake run is really the only part of the ride where you can catch your breath. I use these exact words in my top 25 Midwest Coasters video, but I think Steel Vengeance delivers just about everything you could want from a roller coaster in a single package. Height, speed, airtime, intensity, great inversions. It's pretty obvious that the goal of RMC and Cedar Point's collaboration was to build the ultimate roller coaster, and in my eyes, Vengeance was a massively successful end product. When I first got on Steel Vengeance in 2018, my coaster count was around 100 80-ish, and it was pretty much immediately evident to me that this roller coaster was on a completely different level than anything I had ever ridden. In the three years since then, I've tried to get on most of the coasters that people consider to be the best in the country. Rides like El Toro, Voyage, X2, Lightning Rod, Fury 325, and while all those rides are incredible, I don't consider any of them to be even on the doorstep of Vengeance's greatness as a roller coaster. They're back, and they're here, with a steel vengeance. So let's address this trend of people falling out of love with steel vengeance. Like I mentioned before, in the first couple months after Vengeance opened, you couldn't find a single soul who had been on it that wasn't calling it the best roller coaster they've ever been on. <laughs> Best ride ever. Best ride ever, in my opinion. This is number one. It's my number one. You number one. Yeah, this is this fun ride. It's very fast. Oh my god. <laughs> So why has it become so cool to hate on this ride? I think recency bias plays a little bit of a part in it. Velocicoaster is the community's current shiny new toy that people are instantly claiming as their number one. Which sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? And while I'm not diminishing Velocicoaster's greatness, because I actually may be the only enthusiast left who hasn't been on it yet, as a community, I feel like we have this stupid tendency of using one ride's greatness to diminish other rides. And this is just the example at hand, but just because you now prefer a ride like Velocicoaster more, doesn't mean an older ride like Vengeance automatically now sucks. And it makes me wonder, how long until the community starts calling Velocicoaster overrated? Do we have until March to appreciate it, and then start calling it mid when Pantheon and Iron Gwazi open? I think this has to do with people having this idea that being a contrarian to a popular belief on a certain subject matter somehow elevates their opinion on that subject. This is especially the case in a hobby like being a coaster enthusiast, where ranking things is a big part of the culture. There's this misguided belief that just because my opinion is different from the general consensus, it must be superior. For some weird reason, people think that calling a great ride like Vengeance overrated, or leaving it out of their top 25, makes them like a roller coaster guru or something. That, or they just simply do it for the sake of being edgy and different. I think the rise of social media and the coaster 
hipster community and just in general has created this look at me type of culture, especially among the younger generation. And having a conflicting or divisive opinion is a way to generate attention. And I can't say that I'm innocent of doing this either. I literally have videos on my channel saying that coasters that I know a lot of people really like suck. But the big difference is, those are my honest opinions. If you genuinely don't like Steel Vengeance, that's fine. Everyone is entitled to their own opinions, and I'm not saying that it has to be everyone's number one roller coaster. But it's pretty easy to see through the people who hate on it just for the attention, and it's getting really cringy. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that I promise you guys, it's okay to like popular things. Nobody's gonna think you're any less cool for liking Steel Vengeance, even though it's basic. So this really doesn't feel that necessary, but as a standard practice on the channel, let's throw Steel Vengeance into a tier list. And of course, Vengeance has a place at the very tippy top of the elite tier. I don't think anything else really needs to be said. Steel Vengeance is a phenomenal ride, and it's one of, if not the, greatest roller coaster ever built. That's all I have for this video, thanks for sticking around, and if you've made it to this point, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. As always, appreciate you guys clicking on the video, and we'll see you all next time.